I'm Brad from Kickstarter PPC, and in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to do proper keyword research using Helium 10. Let's get into it. So keyword research is arguably the most important part with your Amazon business. And Helium 10, they do typically have the best data. So let me show you how to use this properly. You're gonna have a couple of options here on what you can do for actual keyword research. First is Cerebro, and then there's Magnets. Cerebro takes you the opportunity to actually pull data from existing ASINs, whilst Magnet, you're doing a lot of the manual work yourself. So let me show you how to use Cerebro. Cerebro works in the way where you decide what ASINs you wanna pull from. So for example, packing tape is what I'll be doing first. So we can go on here, we can pull any competitor ASINs we want. So we could do say Amazon Basics. And just as a rule of thumb, I probably wouldn't do anything in the Amazon Basics category just because unless you've got a very differentiated product, it's gonna be very hard to compete with Amazon, particularly as they've gonna have way better margins than you. So what you wanna do is actually pick out what competition you wanna go for. So for example, Amazon Basics we've got here. So go ahead and add that into Cerebro and maybe we wanna do a couple more as well. So maybe we take on this product as well. So obviously do keep in mind if you're all pulling things from very cheap products, for example, 799, you're gonna have a lot more broad terms show up. Whilst if your product is a bit more premium, do make sure and pull from products that are priced very similar and in the way that you would want to market your product. So let's use two for example, just to make it a bit more simple. You can either go for competitors or you can go for keywords. So you can exclude variations here. Let's start with keywords. We let the program run and do its thing and then you get some initial data. So some of these are not gonna make sense to run. And obviously you can filter these by search volume trend. You can pull them by search volume. Search volume is a good way to look at things, right? And you can see what is the most expensive based on what the actual search volume is. You can see that this one has the most search volume and the bid is a lot higher than say this, which has half the search volume. Scotch tape is obviously a branded keyword, so you do need to keep that in mind. But these are things that people are targeting, so that's fine. The main thing is, you know what you're gonna be pulling from. Tape is gonna be a very broad type of word. So you're gonna be getting you know, normal scotch tape, you're gonna get packing tape. You don't wanna be selling like packing tape like this when you know, you're actually targeting keywords that small tape uses for, for say an office. What you need to do is you need to filter down what you're actually targeting. So for example, you could then go into minimum search volume. So you could say minimum 10,000 search volume, maximum, don't really need a maximum. You could do based on rank, word count. So maybe you want a minimum of two words. So that way you're not just getting tape or Amazon. You're getting sort of long tail terms, but things that are gonna be a bit more relevant. You can make sure that it does include any phrases you want there. So you can have, say, say a phrase match. You might want uh, packing tape in the actual keyword. You can put that in there. Minimum keyword sales you can do as well. Uh, title density, match type. So you can make that organic, sponsored, or, or Amazon recommended. Amazon's choice if you want to. Relative rank. You have a lot of options here. So you can go ahead, customize it as you need. The most important things are gonna be either your search volume, your phrases, word counts, and also competitor ranks as well. You wanna know what your competitors are ranked at, if it makes sense to run that keyword, and also, if you wanna go more granular, minimum and maximum suggested bids. Maybe you don't wanna be bidding seven, eight dollars a click. So in that case, you set the bid at what you actually want it to be. So for this product, that the bids are quite low. So let's say, you don't want anything that's above, say, $1.50. So after that, apply filters. That's gonna then change the keywords that you're actually targeting and see what actually shows up. So from here, you're gonna have Scotch tape show up first. You're gonna have a lot lower bids on what you're going for. So it gives you a bit more variety on what you're targeting and you're not gonna be going for some of that more expensive stuff. Now. You can also go and look at the search volume trends and I recommend you do this. You can see that based on say the middle of December, that was when things were the most because people are buying tape, the, the wrapping presents. And you can see if you do all time, 
you do have that spike at Christmas time every year. You're gonna have that typical buying patterns throughout the year, but then you're gonna have your spikes. Say for example, you look at another keyword like moving supplies. That's probably not gonna have as many spikes throughout the year. You're gonna have, you know, when people are typically moving, but it's gonna be pretty flat. Moving is gonna co coincide with the real estate market, which typically from March and April up until the autumn, that's when things will be a bit more for moving supplies but you're gonna have different trends based on what that search term is actually being used in. So you need to keep that in mind. Although some of these are very broad, so I would actually argue that you need to adjust some of the things we're targeting. So maybe that bid's just a bit too low, make the change. And from here, you're gonna have a lot more search volumes. So between all the terms that you have now, it's a bit more specified on what you're doing. Now, word frequency is quite important. So tape obviously shows up a lot, packing, scotch, moving, these are the main terms you wanna be looking at. So you can actually look at creating this into say a modified broad campaign because you might take moving tape or tape packing plus tape plus packing and you'll get some really nice long tail search terms with that. So you need to really dive into what search terms you wanna be ranking for, look at what the search volume is, what the keyword sales are. Maybe for example, you wanna be going for things that don't have as many sales because you'll find the cost per click is a bit lower. You can properly compete on some of these terms. You'd have to make that decision. But ideally, when you are looking for a product to sell, you need to look at this beforehand because this will give you an idea what you actually need to spend to get it off the ground. So the next keyword tool we can use is Magnet. And this is arguably a pretty good tool overall. So this is gonna look at, rather than the ASIN, it's gonna look at a keyword. So we wanna use something such as packing tape so that we can get as relevant as we can. And as you can see, packing tape comes up straight away. You can then press get keywords. That's gonna just fetch the data just like that. So it's relatively straightforward. You can obviously choose things that you might think are a bit broader. You can do a bit more long tail, whatever suits you best. So when you actually get to this page, you can customize things as you did with Cerebro. So go ahead and add search volume requirements, competing product requirements. You can have that it's uh, it's got certain phrases, keyword sales, all of that. And as you can see, when you actually pull in packing tape, it shows the search volume is 350,000. But you can then see there's a lot of keywords that show up showing as relevant to that keyword, but arguably, some of these are not gonna be very relevant. So when it comes to this, what you wanna do is actually go ahead and say put 10,000 search volume on it. Maybe you wanna have that includes uh, tape because uh, why, why wouldn't it include tape? So you go in here and you're gonna find, I guess the most high search volume terms. So rank by that. So you're gonna have tape, tape dispenser, packing tape, shipping tape, all of these things, a lot of these aren't gonna be relevant, but you can filter through these as you would. So you can look by suggested bid, sponsored ASIN, so you can see how many competitors there are, competing products. Under CPR, it actually gives you an idea how many sales would be required over an eight day period if you actually get to the top half of page one. So this would be a pretty important thing to look at as well. If you scroll down, you'll find more opportunities, like 37 sales over an eight day period isn't too many. And Scotch packing tape isn't too bad of a keyword. You can definitely get some sales coming in. 10,000 search volume isn't crazy compared to some of the other ones, but you might find it's very relevant and then that makes sense to rank for. So all of this data that you can pull on Helium 10 is very useful. It'll give you a lot of insights into what you should be targeting, but you do need to change your criteria and make sure you are going for the most relevant things. Now, what you wanna do next is pull the Excel file. Once you've got the Excel file out, what you can do is you can actually filter by certain keywords. So you can look by search volume. Obviously we're filtering by it already, but say 14,000 isn't enough. We can go ahead and remove that. So customize your list, get it ready for Amazon, and then you can just copy and paste it and put it in your campaigns. So if you're looking at starting to use Helium 10, but you haven't already signed up, here's a couple of coupons I can share with you. If you wanna go below in the description, we've got the link there. But if you actually sign up and use these coupon codes, you'll get 20% off for six months or a lifetime 10% off coupon. So this is pretty useful, especially if you're just starting out. 
Lithium 10 is one of the most important tools, arguably, for Amazon. So make sure you save some money when you actually use it. We hope you found the video useful and hopefully give you some insights on how to properly use Helium 10. If you want more tutorials like this, PPC and Amazon FBA content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've got tons of Amazon PPC coming to you every week. So don't forget to subscribe and stay up to date on what's up and coming and what we've uploaded before. If you're struggling with your Amazon PPC or you just don't have the time to manage it yourself, contact us below, kickstartppc.com. Schedule an audit with us and see how we can help you out. Until the next video, hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you soon. Bye.